There was one moment of my childhood that will stay with me for the rest of my life, almost as a stain on my mind's eye. It all started when me and my family went to Wendy's restaurant. My mother got her paycheck on the first of every month, so for a treat she took us out for dinner. She suggested, why don't we stop at Wendy's and get us some burgers and fries? And she also said, if we were really good, we would each get a large milkshake. As we pulled into the parking lot to find a parking space so we can go in and enjoy our meal, I felt a sense of dread as it fell upon me when I stepped out of the car. It told me that I shouldn't be here for some ominous reason, but I went inside anyway. It was just my imagination. We got in and we ordered our food and sat down at our table. Everything was fine. That is until I noticed that the restaurant had a plastic statue of their mascot, Wendy. The statue was standing in a corner greeting customers as they walked in. She was as people expected her to be with her blue checkered dress and red hair with pigtails and freckles on her face. But something felt wrong as I looked at the statue of Wendy. Something that I could not describe. I just stood there staring at it. And you know what? I could have sworn that it moved a little, almost as if it was alive, but it couldn't be. Statues don't move on their own. As so I thought to myself, that was until it winked at me. When I noticed this, I started to freak out and tell my mom that we needed to leave now, but she did not listen. She just told me to sit down and finish my meal. Knowing that I could not go against my mother, I listened to what she said and sat back down and started to eat. That was until I heard someone scream behind me. When I turned around and saw something that I'll never unsee in my life, there was a boy's corpse playing in front of the statue. In the statue's hand was a knife that wasn't there before. And that's when we all saw the statue did move. It did more and more as I screwed up the young boy's corpse. It then started slicing him open like a deer, and for some reason I could not look away from the horror before me. I could not move as this thing was slicing this boy apart, and then when it stopped, it slowly turned its head towards me, flashing a horrible fang-filled smile in the statue's eyes were red and murderous, filled with contempt. As it dropped the dead child, it started slowly walking towards me. I still couldn't move and I knew I was in danger, but something compelled me to stay. That is until my mother jumped in and tried to save me, but she got injured in the process of saving me. The statue lunged its knife at my mother, slicing her arm. As she grabbed me and started to run, but the statue of Wendy did not like this. It then started to scream in a demonic tone while it started to chase after us. We tried to get out of the doors, but somehow we couldn't get them to open. Somehow, this thing knew that we would try to escape. Then it locked the doors. The creature had us trapped. We thought we were doomed for sure. That is until my mother started to fight back, as she found one of those axes from the fire emergency and took it off the wall and started slashing at the monster, hitting the statue, as it made a sickening crunch. When my mother was done, it was almost like she was hitting plastic but flesh and bone itself. And the creature lashed out in pain and started to scream that demonic tone one more time. Until one final strike that my mother gave by slicing off the statue's head, it fell to the ground with a sickening thud as it was no more. My mother dropped to the ground and turned around and picked me up, then started to hug me. She told me that the nightmare was finally over. We could finally go home, but that was shortly lived when I saw my mother's face went from a smile to a frown, and the life drained from her eyes. The Wendy statue was not dead. It appeared that it was until my mother let her guard down. That's when it took its chance to kill her while she was distracted. I was horrified as I watched my mother die while I was in her arms. I knew I was next. The statue ripped me from my mother's lifeless arms and stared at me for what seemed like forever. 
It then opened its mouth with the same sharp fangs that I saw earlier. It lifted me up over its mouth, and then everything went dark. I had woke up in a freak panic in the hospital with doctors around me. They told me there was an accident at the Wendy's restaurant where my family apparently was. They said that there was a huge toxic gas leak. Many had died and only a few such as myself had survived. But I thought to myself that it seemed so real. I told my doctor about this and he said that it was due to the gas and hallucinations were a side effect. But I told the doctor it seemed too real to not happen. He said that this was a common side effect of gas leaks. He also said that your mind will play tricks on you and make you see what you don't want to see. He ordered me to rest and he told me that he'd be back tomorrow to give me more of an evaluation to see if I was well enough to go home. That night, as I rested, I had the feeling as I did when I was in the restaurant and as I went to call for the nurse, I looked out my door from the hospital bed and I could have sworn I saw a blue dress followed by red pigtails. She's coming for me. There is no escaping her. Even as I speak now, she's getting closer to where I'm at. When she finds me, I will be dead. To think it all started out perfectly normal. I was coming home from work like I always do, and I stopped by one of my favorite fast food places, Wendy's, to grab a bite to eat before I went home. When I got through ordering my food at the drive through window, I noticed something that caught my eye. It was a girl with red hair and pigtails. She appeared to be wearing a blue dress just like the girl from the Wendy's logo. At first, it was just one of the Wendy's employees promoting the restaurant, attempting to drive in more customers, but something felt off. Something felt wrong about the person. She looked more menacing and more devastating than cheerful. Like the girl in the sign, but no. She just felt very creepy. All she did was just stand there, staring directly at me, with those unblinking dead eyes, and when I say dead, I mean empty, soulless eyes fixed on me, almost as if she expected me. However, I shrugged it off as paranoia and fatigue after a long day at work, but when I began to drive away, I drive right past her as I left. She never stopped staring at me, I had my windows rolled down and I thought I heard her say something when I passed, but I had to get home. When I got home, I went inside and changed my clothes. I turned on some TV and began to eat my food. Before I was able to take a bite of my burger, I heard a giggle from somewhere in the house. That's when I began to shout and call out, Who is that? Is there someone here? Show yourself or I will call the police. That's when I got a reply back. I saw you today. I want you to come and play with me. As the voice said in a soft, grisly tone, I immediately panicked and yelled, Who are you? The strange girl replied, said, Well, I'm Wendy, of course. Come play with me, mister. We will have lots of fun forever and ever. I promise. After I heard this, a lump formed in the back of my throat. As I got up from my couch and started to run towards the door, when I got to the door, I swung it open and I was going to get the hell out of the house. But as soon as I swung the door open, I saw the girl from the restaurant standing in front of me. But this time, something about her was different than before. This time, her eyes were pitch black. Her hair was matted, caked in blood, and when she smiled, I could see sharp and yellow pointed teeth lining the inside of her mouth. I thought I was scared shitless before this point, but this time I was freaking the fuck out. Wendy spoke to me again, but this time in a demonic and demanding voice. Why won't you come play with me? No one 
wants to play with me. Not even daddy, and he is dead. So I slammed the door on this monster, and I began to run into the kitchen where I grabbed a knife and a phone where I immediately called 911. Once I finally got a hold of someone, I explained to them what was happening and where I was located. They thought it was a prank call and they hung up on me. I started to cry and fall into a devastating meltdown. Suddenly, I heard the door crash open and I thought to myself, she's in the fucking house. What am I going to do? But then it dawned on me, I'm going to try and attack it head on to see if I can kill it. So I waited till I got closer and as I waited, I heard the thing wrecking my house. I could still hear it call out to me. Come play with me. We will have lots of fun together. You can have all the frosties you can drink and all the burgers you can eat. Come out. I won't hurt you much. I just want to play. As I kept on trying to lure me out, it got more aggravated. Come out, dare you. I want to fucking play. As it roared in an aggravated tone, that's when I yelled out, I will never come play with you. You evil piece of shit. You evil spawn from hell. Leave me alone! I yelled out to it, and then it started to giggle as it said to me, But I don't want to leave you alone. I choose you. And when I choose someone, I will take them so we can have lots of fun for all eternity until they die. As it said this, the footsteps got closer to where I was. I was ready to strike this time. I jump out, hitting the creature with absolute force with the knife I had in my hand, striking it right between the eyes. Wendy let out a horrifying, painful shriek. That's when I began to run towards the door, but I wound up tripping on the clutter before I could reach the door. That's when I heard the creature say, You're really starting to piss me off. There's no running from me. I will catch you. I will find you. And when I do, our playtime will be more fun to me than it will for you. So I got back up on my feet and finally made it to the door where I made it to my car and I spun off full speed to go anywhere but here, far away from where the monster is. So now I'm sitting here in a hotel room praying to God, hoping she will never find me. Hoping that I would not die, but but wait, I hear giggling at the door right now. She, she's here. No, oh, Jesus Christ, she's found me. I have nowhere else to go. She is in. She's in front of me now. If you never hear from me again, just remember one thing. If you ever see a strange girl in front of your local Wendy's restaurant, don't make eye contact with this stranger in a Wendy's costume. Looks can be deceiving. <sighs> it's been a week since my friend John went missing. The last time anyone had heard from him, he had checked in at a hotel with the look of panic on his face. They said the police had received several complaints at the hotel of shrill screaming of the same room number that John had checked in that night. When the police arrived on the site, all they could find in that room was blood that matched John's. There was also a black sticky substance that was everywhere along with a takeaway bag that was from Wendy's restaurant, and a message was written on that bag in the same black substance. Do you want to play with me? But that is the only known evidence the police officers gathered from the scene, so I decided to take things into my own hands and investigate the case myself and get to the bottom of John's mysterious disappearance. The first place I went to look was John's house. Now it's surrounded by police tape just like any other crime scene, but I managed to sneak in without anyone seeing me. I looked around to see if I could find any clues, and boy, did I find clues. Near the torn up furniture was the same black substance found in John's hotel room and written on the walls in the same black goo was the words, do you want to play with me? I have seen those words before on television, but seeing them in person just brings a chill down my spine. 
so I began to leave, but was struck with the feeling that I was being watched. Not by the police or neighbors, but by something that was inhuman. But I couldn't place the feeling, so I left. As I was going down the road back to my house to further my investigation on file, I was stopped by a red light. As I was sitting there waiting for the light to change to green, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I turned to what was there, and as I did, there appeared to be a girl playing hopscotch on the sidewalk. But something felt off about this little girl. She was dressed in an old-fashioned Victorian dress. Her hair and pigtails. She had porcelain white skin with freckles, and I thought to myself, no one dresses like that anymore, unless they're going to some type of costume party or convention. But I couldn't take my eyes off of this little girl. I was almost entranced by her. Right up until someone blowing their horn behind me broke my concentration. That's when I noticed the light was green and I finally took off. When I finally made it to my house, I got right to work and put together the pieces of the puzzle. Just like my friend John, there has been cases of people going missing and the trace of the black substance was found at every crime scene, like the one in the next town over where one boy went missing. He was last seen with his friends at a Wendy's restaurant, and then another, as people would like to call it the gas leak incident, where a young boy swore he saw a statue of the mascot Wendy come to life but was disregarded. Because he inhaled too much gas and the loss of his family caused him so much grief he could not cope with the reality, and most recently, my friend John. I could not point my finger on it, but they were all connected in some way. All of the witnesses' statements that were taken by the police, all the same thing. They saw a girl dressed as Wendy. This got me thinking about that little girl from earlier. This simply can't be, I said to myself. Somehow that little girl is connected to all this and somehow she has the answers. I was pulled from my thoughts as the doorbell rang. Startled, I went to the door to see who it was. When I looked out the peephole of my door, I saw the same little girl from earlier, but this time she looked a lot different. Her hair was matted, her dress was dirty and appeared to be stained with blood and this is when I thought the poor girl could be in trouble and I needed to help her out. That was the worst mistake I could have made. I opened my door and I asked her, Is everything alright sweetie? Do you need some help? And that's when she looked up at me with those eyes, those non-human eyes. She said to me, No, I don't need any help, but would you play with me? Her tone was soft, but I struggled to hear her words, and so I said, What was that, sweetheart? I did not hear you. Then she said it a little louder, but more demonic this time. Want to play with me? After I heard this, I instinctively shut the door and tried to lock it, but the thing was too strong. She managed to break down my door before I was able to lock it, so I ran to the drawer where my knives were and took one out and I began to run to the back door. As I got the door opened, I heard the creature yell out, Why won't you come play with me? No one wants to play with me! I started to scream back, Stay back, you fucking monster, or I will not hesitate to protect myself. And that's when the thing started to laugh and said, You think you could kill me? No one can kill me. Not even that foolish man from before who would not play with me. I think his name was John. He made a good meal after I was through playing with them, though. After I heard this, I almost puked and I burst into tears, knowing that this thing killed my friend. So I had to think of a way to kill it before it killed me, like it did my good friend John. So I swallowed my pride and ran back inside where the creature was, knife in hand. I stood face to face with it this time, and the features of this monster had changed. Its eyes were completely black, its skin was peeling away, and its teeth were sharp, jagged, and stained with blood. Coming out of its mouth was the same gooey black substance that was found at every crime scene. It began to approach me, 
getting even closer as I waited for the right opportunity and when it came I lunged at it, stabbing it multiple times in the face. It screamed with an ear-piercing screech and I started to yell and scream at the monster. DIE YOU FUCKING BITCH DIE! I kept on stabbing it to make sure it was dead. Then I got up and started to walk away, thinking that I won. And that's when something grabbed my leg. The fucking thing's hair had grabbed me by the leg like a tentacle and started to pull me back towards the supposing dead monster. As I glanced back at it, the creature's mouth was wide open, ready to eat me just as it did John. And then I blacked out. And I woke up, freaking the fuck out. Until I realized I was safe and back home in my own bed. And I thank God that it was only a dream, but it felt so damn real. Maybe the searching for the missing people had finally got to me, I thought. That is, until I got ready to go to work the next morning. After that horrible dream, I walked out to my car with a cup of coffee in my hand. And that's when I saw it on my car windshield. The same black substance written on it. It said, Let's play again next time. The end.